This episode of ATV 360 was provided to you by the University at Albany Library, a place for you Albany students to rent books and equipment for both classes and personal use. Hey Great Danes, welcome to ATV 360. My name is Izzy D. Edwards. And I'm Elijah Casper. Today we'll be covering an investigative piece on the Interfaith Center here on campus. Let's take a look. The Interfaith Center is a building on the edges of the University of Albany's campus, where students of all faiths or no faith at all can go and practice away from the main campus life. Last month, the members of the Interfaith Center received word that as of June 2018, the Interfaith programs would be moving to a campus center office. thing about this like building itself is that like it's part of the campus, but like it's its own little like unique corner of it it's its own quiet place and it really does allow me to physically take myself from all of my troubles when it comes to you know college life essentially and it's just great to know that i have this kind of place for it you know and that's one of the main things i like about it and at any time of the day i could come over here if i want to study or pray or whatever it's my own spot essentially and it does that does mean a lot to me because there's not that many other places on campus where i'm allowed to do that you know you can't get something like that from the library or anything you know but yeah that's why i like about like the interfaith center it's its own like i don't know what's the word like home like in a sense it's just cozy you know like that's like the essentials essentially um, yeah it's a place um where you can do a lot of stuff that you can't really do on campus um that's because it's location you know it's um there's the library of course where you know there's a lot of literature so you know whatever you believe in even if you don't believe in a higher power you can find something that agrees with your point of view and you can find stuff that you can be intrigued upon there's the garden in the backyard that, you know, you can kind of put your mind at rest. There is the community lounge where you can hang out. There's the meditation room where you can kind of let go of it all. So, you know, just, uh, you know, just, you know, a very open place and a very special place. Sad. Frustrated. I'd like to know more about why it's shutting down and what the plan is. I talk to people who tell me that they don't understand why the Interfaith Center is closing when we live in a time when it's so important to bring people of faith, different faiths together, and now they're taking away a space where people already do that. Not just at the school, but within the community. Um, so the Interfaith Center is basically um, a place of refuge, kind of for me. Um, uh, freshman year, my mom had cancer, and it was some place that I could go and be safe with the people that were always here. And it was just some place that um, no one judged me for anything, like who I am, my background or anything. And I just, that's what it was then. And now it's just become like a home and everyone becomes my family and it's just, yeah. When contacting the university for a comment, University of Albany's communications specialist Mike Nolan directed ATV360 to a letter from U Albany Vice President for Student Affairs Mike Christakis in an FAQ about the Albany Collegiate Interfaith Center. The letter states, Moving forward, the university seeks to locate interfaith programming in the campus center. This location, in the heart of the uptown campus, is convenient for students to access and allows the university to provide appropriate support services. In anticipation of renovation and repairs to the former Interfaith Center building, the university will move its interfaith programs into the campus center by June 1, 2018. The state was chosen to minimize disruption to these important programs during the academic year. As for how the sale came about, the FAQ reads, In March 2016, the ACIC approached the university about buying the property. Negotiations commenced between the University of Albany's Foundation and ACIC, resulting in a sale that closed on November 22, 2016. Given the Interfaith Center's location along the campus ring road, the Foundation's purchase is consistent with the University's desire to, where feasible, 
avert development of immediate adjacent land by others in ways that may be inconsistent with the needs of the campus. As for if the University at Albany Foundation will keep the property, the FAQ states no. The foundation and university intend to follow the administrative process required by SUNY to donate the land to the university. As for if the Interfaith Center will be demolished, the FAQ reads, The university currently has no plans to demolish the Interfaith Center building. The future use of the building will be determined pending an analysis by the university of its space needs. This process is currently underway. In the interim, the foundation is allowing the university to continue using the building to house its interfaith programs. As for if the university will continue with interfaith programming, the FAQ reads, Yes, following the ACIC's decision to sell its property, the university committed to establishing its own interfaith program as part of the university's Office of Intercultural Student Engagement and by assigning the former ACIC clergy as office campus volunteers. We will continue to cover the relocation of the Interfaith Center as more information is released. On Saturday, November 11th, Yoga Care held an event at the U Albany Art Museum. Both students and community members were able to participate. ATV was on the scene. Yoga Care will be holding another event on Saturday, December 9th at the UAlbany Art Museum. For more information, visit the UAlbany Art Museum's website. On November 13th, the Student Association presented Neil with Kaepernick on campus at the Small Fountain. We are there to get students' comments on the event. My name is Frank Wiley. I am the Chief of Police here. But I didn't come here today in that role specifically. I'm an interested person in the community, and I think it's very, very important to support young people. And I was asked to come and share what information I had, and I felt like I couldn't say no, and I didn't want to say no. Because the question I would ask is, isn't it better to have uncom uh, uncomfortable conversations rather than have uncomfortable confrontations, which appear you're having today as a result of this? Athletes have been involved in social issues for a very, very, very long time. And while he absolutely is today's news and should be today's news, there are other people that have taken very serious stand. Colin Kaepernick is a hero because he has demonstrated that he would be willing and is suffering a tremendous, a tremendous deficit as a result of the positions that he's taken. It is not unusual for athletes to take stands, and it takes a tremendous amount of courage for that to happen. Today is a man named Harry Belafonte. Have any of you heard of him? He's extraordinary. Well, he was interviewed on TV One, and he said that um, to mute the slave has always been in the best interest of the slave owner. And it is a noble thing that Kaepernick is doing. And he says that the black community, the American community, is enhanced by his protest. Uh, use this event to spur you to do something bigger. So uh, I know for me, it's, it's inspired me to become more active in my community, in the Albany community, and communities I'm going to find uh, later down the road. I hope that, that I provided some information and some clarity to the discussion that was constructed. On November 17th, University of Albany Department of Latin American, Caribbean, and Latino Studies presented From One Mistake, a new film by UAlbany alumnus 
Hendel Leva on immigration and hate crimes. Much of the discussion at this event not only focused on Hendel's story, but also UAlbany student Johanna Hara. So Hendel contacted our department, um, and we always like to welcome um, a film series every now and again to campus. Um, so he was actually the one that contacted us, and I jumped on it. Um, being an avid social media user myself, um, I found him on Twitter and Facebook, and um, it, it was a no-brainer to invite him to campus, um, especially with his own activism. And um, I knew that I knew that he would uh, speak so well to our students on campus, being young himself um, and a UAlbany alum, and again, just being active on social media, um, it was it was a no-brainer. Joanna's story was really impactful, and we're so fortunate and thankful that she um, came, came out and, and spoke from the heart. Was this the first time within a room full of people that you've discussed this? Uh, yes, it, it is. It, it was really scary, and I was really nervous. But um, I'm glad I did it, yeah. You didn't, well, you didn't seem as, you said in the beginning, you sounded very nervous, but at a certain point in time, it, it almost seemed as though you were talking to a single person. Yeah, um, I mean, I've done public speaking before, and like I always said, it's really hard to start, and then afterwards, it's like, you need to stop me because I get too comfortable. I knew I wanted to come to the University of Albany to uh, screen the film. Um, I, you know, I was a student here for four years, and I wanted to be here to show the film. So I typed her name in, um, and she was the only DACA recipient that was quoted in an article. And that's great because, like, you know, we connected. But that's also not so great because that means not enough awareness is out there. Not enough folks are coming forward to share the stories because there might not be that support structure uh, in the capital region area. I think that universities can do more to help humanize uh, the stories, can help more to empower folks to uh, speak up, um, to be speakers um, at events. I'm more concerned with the stories. You know, I feel like the stories are, are what's going to have an impact at the local level that hopefully can motivate folks to come out um, and, vote <clears throat> and vote for the change that they want to see. So there are activists that have been out for a long time and that have worked in, in uh, immigration rights. There are some folks that I interview that have never spoken up and are using the show for the first time. Um, but I think what I, my passion is genuine. You, you know, sometimes in the nonprofit world, you know, people try to solicit stories and blurbs and kind of just use people for the lack of a better term. Um, I actually care about these people. I actually care about these issues. And so I think people see through interviews and like referrals from friends and et cetera, um, that I'm genuine, that I'm real, and I'm going to share everybody's story with respect. I just think that I feel a little more empowered than I did before. Um, maybe it's also because I'm growing up, but uh, I realize, you know, I can do more than I could have done before. But, I mean, what he has kind of taught me is not to be scared and that this is like a way of me maybe like being like or joining or working for like nonprofits and that's kind of what I want to do and I feel like he kind of inspires me in a way to do that and um, help other people I want to help immigrants. To watch from one mistake in full check out Hendel's YouTube page. Thanks for watching this episode of ATV 360. For more Albany student television content go check out our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram pages linked in the description.